guys, Brianna K here. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Today I am organizing and cleaning up this playroom. This is my favorite room to be in the house, but it is in a little bit of a need of some organization and a little sprucing up. So I'm a big believer in rotating out the toys. That way your kids, or at least my kids, feel like there's some like newness to the room and they're more engaged in their activities so that you can get things done. I found that with Bella, when I wasn't organizing her toys, she wasn't really playing with them as much as she would be if they were like in a new spot or just like went away for a couple months and then cycled back in. So today we're doing a little bit of that. I'm also bringing in some of the baby toys that Bella used to use for Bridget because now that she's four months, she's in a much bigger developmental leap and is looking for more ways to like just be entertained. Right? I'm taking that table there, um, which is actually the Skip Hop XR Saucer um, that Bella used when she was a baby, and I'm making it into the XR Saucer again for Bridget. Um, so I'll show you kind of how like we re revamp the toys so that we get a lot of space out of it. I do know that especially when budgeting for baby and budgeting for kids in general, toys when they're gifted or given can be like very messy, a little bit of chaotic, and then just also crazy. So I wanted to show you how to like extend the life of your toys so that they're fun and exciting and don't break the bank. I hope this video is helpful for you. If you do enjoy the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you around to join our community. Any little fun tidbits that you have for me, drop them in the comment section below. I'd love to chat with you guys. All right, let's get organizing. Let's do this. <laughs> Okay, so this is the current state of the playroom. I'm sure that you can relate. That's my desk over there. That's where I get my work done during the day. Um, that activity center is awesome. This is the Skip Hop Exer Saucer that we bought the chairs for and made it a table for Bella. We got a lot of use out of that. Her swing, this is like all of her toys organized. And then we keep a day bed in here so that we have like extra space for if guests come over. So there's the day bed and then underneath is like a pull out couch as well. Bam. That's her little height chart, her dresses, tummy time stuff. Life is a winding road, no telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs and then this part's really easy too. All you take is like, this is how it stores. And then you press this part down and then it comes out and it's gonna clip underneath the table there. Jumping from cliffs so high Trust in our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground There she is! So you just want to make sure that their feet are flat And that they can play I will keep on searching for my highs. Okay, so this is the section that I just cleaned. And this is stuff that I'll probably keep because she does play with a lot of these things kind of all the time. So we have a TV in our playroom. I love it. We would do Disney Plus. I keep our diapers and wipes in here because we're in this room for majority of the day. Bridget's swing is over there, followed by like my weights because I do my workouts in here. Um, I want to walk you through this cube here. So um, I keep puzzles and like um, learning flashcards and things in this cube here. I keep our puzzles in here. That's the, I think, Melissa and Doug rack that I got from Amazon. And then I keep just a bunch of books here at her level. I like to have them here um, where they're low enough to the ground that if they fall, 
they're not really hurting her, right? It's a very short distance. Um, some people opt for putting them lower on the very bottom rack, but the stuff that I have in these cubes are a little bit more heavy. So we haven't had an issue and I love to keep the books there. In these cubes, I got these from Crate and Barrel. I'll link everything below. I keep her um, Choo Choo tractor set. Like it's a huge set, it fits in this barrel. I love these and I love that they're soft. Um, I appreciate soft um, crates because when babies fall or toddlers fall, it's so much nicer for them to fall like into something soft rather than something hard like a um, wire basket. I keep other blocks in here. There's a ver like a bunch of different blocks. These are like those soft lakeshore blocks. Again, like I love this soft flexible for that reason. Babies and toddlers fall. My first child is like my accident child, so I learned all this very quickly with her. Everything needs to be really soft. So we have those in there. I have like these foam blocks at the bottom and then these, I think I got like the Target Dollar Spot. They're, they're like a classic. They're not soft, but um, they're small enough. Okay, and then in here, we keep all her little people stuff, um, like the little people people. And then I have like these that I bought at an airport on the way home from Florida. But so like little figurines and toys. And then this is her music bin. So I have like her piano and then like drums and like short drums are in here too. I love these. Um, so when we do like music time at home, I'll just pull that out and um, they know that that's what we're playing with. You came along, couldn't look away. Okay, so here are all of the toys that I sort of like organized out. She has like her toy bin and then she does her makeup on top of that. I've kind of cleaned the um, kitchen set. We put together that skip hop activity gym and then that's where, or extra saucer, excuse me. And then that's where Bridget will play. Um, in the back here I have like her stuffed animals and then some dolls. And that's like her activity center that I just fold up and then we bring it out to the floor here to play. This tub here is all of Bridget's little baby toys and I'm gonna slowly start to like transition some of the bins here to put this stuff for now and then I'll probably put this like in the corner over there just to store. But I want to talk really quickly about some of the stuff in here. This rug is from Pottery Barn. I know it's a little bit more pricey, um, a lot of it more pricey but one I saved up for it and two I really liked it and two um, it hides a lot, right? So when looking for a rug, just find something with patterns, um, a lot of patterns. That way, if there's any drops or spills or anything like that, it's easy to clean or easy to hide. Like there's lots of stains on here and it's hard for me to even find them. Um, this like cube is from Kmart. It's not even Ikea. It was like cheaper than Ikea. Um, and then let's see what else. That storage bin is from Amazon. A lot of this stuff I found at a discount, like even the rug. I made sure I bought that on Black Friday. But yeah. So over here, I kept um, Bridget's cube and then I put the little tummy time thing behind that play gym. The blankets that I keep in this room are back behind there. Um, and then this bedding, that bedding's from Target. I like white. I find that it's easier to clean. I can just bleach it. And then the pullout is underneath there for when guests come. Now it's time for my desk. Um, it's definitely a beast. This is the place in my home where stuff just gets like dropped. This is the catch-all table. It's my desk like 20% of the time. The rest of the time it's just used to catch all of our junk. Because we have like the closets right over there, right? So usually we set bags down and we go. But now to tackle this. Okay, here is the final product. <laughs> like so excited that my desk is like cleared off and nice. I keep Bella's like wheelie strollers and cars and stuff under there. And then when I work, I just move them over and put a chair there. I did want to talk about this. This is like my activity center and it is one of my favorite things in the playroom. So let me walk you through it. Okay, so this is my activity center. I love this thing. Um, the teacher in me just like brought it into the playroom. Um, I feel like it really helps Bella autonomously play and get creative when she's having some independent time. 
so I got this from I think I got this from Walmart I may have got it from home goods um, but I know that you can get it from like Amazon or Walmart I know a ton of teachers that use stuff like this just to organize their day and how we use it in our playroom in our home is just to like organize the different types of activities right so um, there's one two three six drawers so I have like six different like stations if you will so when Bella wants to play with something she'll literally like come out open the drawer and then go to like her table it used to be that skip hop table and then I moved this table in here um she'll go to the table and just like play while I get work done or if I'm like feeding the baby or whatnot like she loves this station I will preference this with like I know every kid is different I know some kids like really can't be like trusted with something like this um some kids are like super messy Bella it kind of just depends on the day but for the most part we found that it's been a huge huge help and I just want to help other moms if like you're in need of something especially if you're like me and you have two kids in two years like they need to be able to, to play on their own sometimes so the top drawer is just like my stuff like in here i have stickers or like um i have like this melissa and doug like sticker kit i keep stickers up here she can't really reach this yet um so that's been a bonus <laughs> And then I'll also keep like just other activities like if I go to the dollar store and pick up like a ceramic craft for her to paint. This is like a wooden birdhouse paint thing. So if I just need like a, an activity or something, um, painting we don't do in here. We do it in the kitchen, but I still like keep stuff organized here. I don't keep scissors or anything like that in here. I didn't think that's a danger, of course, is safely away. The next drawer is her Play-Doh drawer. I love Play-Doh and Kinetic Sand. Um, Play-Doh especially, I f it keeps little hands busy for so long. And I find it's very easy to vacuum up. <laughs> Maybe I'm ruining my vacuum, I don't know. But it works for me in this time of life. So I keep her Play-Doh and all of her little things. I have like a huge tub of Play-Doh that I got from Amazon. Um, and I keep that in our garage. So then I'll just buy like these little Target party sets and just refill them with the Play-Doh that I have because she goes through a lot of it. I know that you can make your own, but right now with a four-month-old and a toddler, I don't, a four-month-old and a two-year-old, I don't really have time to make Play-Doh. <laughs> then I have like her crayons and her paint stuff. So like I said, I know my kid, she hasn't like gone through this on her own. I also keep it in like a Ziploc bag that I know she can't open when she gets to that phase. Maybe I'll take it out, but for now this really works. I think I'll always keep like the watercolor paints because they're just great. And then I keep crayon uh, coloring books. This is like how we paint the different types of crayons. I keep paint in here and then like I always keep crayons in like a little soap dish too so I'll refill those from here if we're going out but so this is like her coloring drawer and then oh my gosh the next drawer I love so much I know so many moms love this drawer so this is the like magic marker drawer so these are the markers that and this is really like the drawer this and the play-doh all right there she goes through every drawer so her favorite drawers are probably this and the play-doh so these are like the markers that I only color on their particular type of paper. These like mess free papers. So I keep them here in a big drawer. Oh my gosh, she will color these all day long. And then I also came across these two. I actually was working for um, MJ Mom last summer and I got to go to Crayola and visit their new scrub a dubby exhibit or something like that. So these, I gotta get the name, I'll link it below. But these are like little animals that they can color on and then under the water the color goes away. Bella thinks it's the coolest thing ever. So I have two of them and I keep them in here too. But so this is like her total mess free drawer. Like if I'm going upstairs to feed and I have a monitor on, I'll pull this out on her table and she'll just go to town. Next are these Kumon learning books. So these we do together, but I cannot speak more highly of these books. I get them off Amazon. They're that Kumon Learning Center brand. Um, but they say like the ages of the books and essentially you're teaching them skills that they would learn in like preschool, but you're teaching them at home and it's an activity book. I, I adore these, <laughs> like love them. I buy them, tons of them. Um, so what I like about them most is like each book talks about like a different thing. Like we've done stickers, we've done cutting, we've done tracing. 
Um, we're right now, we're learning about like gluing, like cutting and pasting glue. She's two and a half. So um, she uh, loves these books. Um, but so like, for example, like you go through the book, they, they give you the like prompt, like what as a parent you need to say to your kid. Like you don't even think, you just essentially have to read. And then um, walk them through the activity. And there's tons of them. Like I've had these books since the beginning of quarantine. So that's like four months now. We haven't gone through all of them. It's just like amazing. So I definitely recommend these Kumon learning books. And I keep them in this drawer here. And then in the bottom drawer, it's kind of like, not a mishmash, it's just again like for kind of storage purposes. I wish I had like one more drawer, but then I think it would be too tall. I keep the um, Melissa and Doug Water Wow books. So these are the books that like you color on with water and like um, the image gets colored. I discovered these when we were on a plane ride with Bella. I think she was like a year, maybe like nine months or so. And um, they were in the airport. I was like, gotta buy those. I bought these and I actually bought those animals for the plane ride back because she had used up all the activities and all the stickers and everything else I brought. She loves these. Anytime I see these in the store, I pick one up. <laughs> and you can get them at like Marshalls or Home Goods for like less than five bucks. So I keep those in there. And then I also keep some felt um, activities. So sometimes, sometimes if I'm on my mom game, I will do a base on the season. But let's see, what month is it? June? I have Easter bunnies and gingerbread men. <laughs> and she doesn't care. So um, this is like, I guess, like more of a sensory bin too because I have like little felt um, pipe cleaners and like little felt bowls. And then I keep um, like other felt board stuff and I put it in here too. So um, this is just like where she comes. Honestly, this keeps her busy. I'm kind of shocked because I don't know how interesting it is, but she loves to do that and I keep it at the bottom so that way if she wants to dump it, she dumps it and I clean it up at the end. But this car, oh my gosh. If you're home with babies and they're little babies, I know how hard it is. It is, nobody talk, I guess maybe I just wasn't listening, but it's very difficult to get through a day with a two year old and a newborn or like it's hard. So this activity center honestly saved me, especially in those early months, um, especially when I had family members over and like I just didn't have to think. I would, they would go in the playroom, they would hang out with Bella and entertain her. They knew about this. There was always an activity and I could tend to the newborn. So like, oh my gosh, I highly, highly recommend this. And then also I didn't talk about this. Um, when we do paint or coloring and stuff, I have like this wooden Melissa and Doug um, paint board. I just keep that on top for today's paper. I keep extra colored paper in this drawer. Yeah, the mess free drawer. And then that goes right on top. It's the best. So I hope that that helps somebody. If it did, drop me a comment because I'd love to hear. But if you use something like this and like you use it for another purpose, like I'd love to know how you're using yours too, especially if your kids are like growing up or they're older, like how am I going to recycle this? Because this bad boy is like my fave. Seriously. <laughs> One other quick little add-on that I added to this cart for homeschool preschool is this activity center organizer. So to be a little bit more intentional throughout the day, I created these slots and I just bought this from the dollar store um, that kind of followed what Bella did at her daycare. So every day at the end of her daycare, we would get a like report and they were all of these different functional areas. So I basically just took those and added carpet time and then put these like little post-its together. So we don't hit every, all of these every day. Definitely not. This is more of like a quick one-time intentional activity that way. I know that we did something meaningful throughout the day or maybe twice a day, but I'll say, okay, Bella, go and pick a post-it from this one so she'll just go and she'll pick um the post-it and so like she'll just go and pick and she gets so excited mm -hmm. all right you want to pick from there all right pick a post-it good job okay now open it up and that says puzzles it says puzzles all right so go ahead go get your puzzles go pick a puzzle yeah thank you we we'll just do puzzles for right now Okay, so carpet time is just like some togetherness. We'll do that first thing in the morning or right after nap. 
cognitive developments or things that just kind of like challenge her. Um, creative art, so painting, Play-Doh, language arts would be like story reading, motor skills, music and movement, science and nature, connections between her and I, hygiene and self-care, and if I had a weekly theme. But those are the categories that I did and they maybe put like five or so post-its behind them. Um, it took me all of maybe 20 minutes to put this together and it's been really helpful for us to stay like somewhat intentional. It's getting closer to midnight I tried to get closer to you Drinking courage from my red cup now I will soon make a move Okay, and that's all we got. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day and hope to see you soon.